You join us today on the River Calder in West Yorkshire and I'm fishing at Murfield. Not so long ago this river was terribly polluted but now it's bounced back and there's some very prolific match weights being caught throughout the whole length and throughout the season. I spoke to the match secretary yesterday, Martin High, and he suggested we fish this peg on this stretch and I think it's going to give us a good indication of what a prolific venue the cold has become. So the stretch I'm fishing at Murfield is at the Ship Inn and I'm fishing about 200 yards, a peg 200 yards below the weir. It's a nice steady peg, the river's quite low at the moment and it's only about three or four foot deep and um, I know that there was a match here yesterday that was one with over 20 pounds of roach and dace and so I'm anticipating it to fish a bit harder today, obviously it's difficult conditions with the, the bright sunlight but we're fishing in match conditions and hopefully we can show a few tips that can help to improve your catches on a river such as the colder and on a day like this. So I'm going to approach this peg today as if it was a match and I'm going to try and eke out as many fish as I can within the five hours. And I think that's a really important concept to think about when you're fishing a match venue like this. The level of um, fishermen on this river is really high. You've got people from the Barnsley team like Dennis White, Keith Hobson and a lot of regulars that really know the river back to front. And because it's predominantly small fish, silver fish like roach, dace, some chub and grayling, um, I think that's where it really pays to think about how you can maximise as much as possible your day and your peg to try and win some money. So what I've done today is I've set up a simple waggler, um, 2AA waggler, that's going to be my main line of attack and I'm going to fish that down the middle and over towards the far bank. I've also set up a, a light stick float and a link lead as well, again to try and maximise as much as I can so I can feed a line closer in and I can actually fish the stick float over the waggler and also the link over the waggler as well so it offers me different types of presentation. And um, after talking to Martin he explained that you know you don't want to be feeding a lot of bait on this river, it's not a, a river that responds to lots of bait. So all I've been doing is I've just started fishing now and I'm loose feeding hemp, maybe 10 or 12 grains of hemp and uh, three or four maggots, that's all. So I'm just trying to build up an area in the swim which is attracting and feeding the fish but it's not overfeeding them. And then I can take it from there, obviously if the fish respond well I can up the feed. Um, if it gets harder and harder then I might end up just feeding hemp and cut back the maggots completely. So um, let's give it another go and as I say I've started on the waggler and I've had a few small roach and uh, grayling already so it looks like there's some fish around but I'm also conscious about the fact that the peg was fished yesterday so I think it's going to be a lot harder. So as we're fishing in match conditions um, and it's bright you can imagine in a shallow swim like this that the fish can easily be disturbed so what I do like to do is um, get set up and get down in close to the water so that I'm off the profile and um, try and stay down so I bring everything down that I need all my bait, terminal tackle so that I'm not walking up and down the bank because that can really impede your catch rate and I've started off fishing really quite fine today I'm fishing with um, a light reel line 014mm diameter and I've actually got an 08 hook length on with a 22 hook and I'm just fishing with a single maggot. And what I like to do when I'm fishing on hard days like this is establish a feed area and then try and fish around that area so that I'm not pounding one spot all the time and I'm giving the fish chance to settle back again. So at the moment I'm fishing in the feed zone but I might try it in a bit closer or I might try it a bit further downstream or I might rest that area completely and try on the inside but these roach that I'm catching they're not massive but they're great weight builders and it doesn't take too many of them to start building up a respectable weight absolutely beautiful chunky fish
as I mentioned, I do like feeding hemp, particularly in the summer, because I think it, it does attract the fish. I think the noise of it splashing in the water and then falling through the water does attract the fish. But really, it doesn't overfeed them. If I was feeding maybe 10, 20 maggots every cast, I think pretty quickly I'd overfeed the swim and I'd be struggling to get any bites at all. So by feeding hemp like this and the odd maggot, I can hopefully fish, keep the fish coming throughout the five hour match. So because the river's quite shallow here, um, I don't need a big float with a big capacity. So I'm only using a 2AA waggler, which has got a fine insert, which is helping me spot the slightest bites today. Obviously you need to have a float that will get you to where you're fishing and present the bait correctly. But I think that's an important point. I'm, on another day, you might even fish a lighter 3BB waggler, but there's been quite a strong downstream wind at times. So I've needed that extra bit of weight from the uh, 2AA waggler. There's another lovely roach. And um, I am fishing very fine, as I mentioned. I'm using an 08 hook length. And um, in some cases, when we're fishing on the Avon, we'll even fish finer down to 06, which is obviously seriously fine. But it can make a massive difference on days like this when the fishing's harder and the conditions are bright. Obviously, you probably wouldn't fish like that all day. Um, and certainly you wouldn't fish like that if there's any bonus fish about. If you're just targeting silverfish like roach and dace, fishing really fine and scaling down your hooks as well can make a big difference. The key thing to do is just to try and do everything very gently, obviously. Don't strike too wildly, just lift into the fish and play the fish very carefully and net any bonus fish that you do catch. The rod I'm using is a 13 foot super team match and I've matched that up with a 035 super team reel. So the rod's a lovely versatile rod, it's got a nice soft tip and one that will be able to accommodate using these finer hook lengths and smaller hooks. Um, the actual float I'm using, as I mentioned at the start, is a 2AA insert waggler. Uh, I think the insert's really helpful when you're trying to spot fast biting fish like these roach and grayling and dace today. And um, one tip I'd give you is uh, don't just use a couple of big shots to, to lock your float. As you can see there, I've actually got three BB shots, got a number four and some number eights. It just means that the rig's much more streamlined and actually less prone to tangling. And it's also important to leave that bit of movement uh, on the float adapter so that the float will collapse when you strike. So that's why, one reason why I like to use a quick change adapter, but the other is obviously, it's just great for being able to change the float quickly if you need to increase or decrease the capacity of the float or even the style of the float. So the, um, the main line, as I mentioned, is this 014 Mac XT, which is a pre-stretched line that's absolutely fantastic for fishing today on a river like this. So it's nice and fine. It's very supple, but it's also very strong. And it floats well, so it's a great float line. And I've matched that with our 08 Mac XT hook length. If, if the fishing improved or started catching some bigger fish, then obviously I'd want to be fishing a bit heavier and I'd probably switch up to an 010 hook length of the same type. And the hooks I'm using today is just a size 20 or size 22 um, B560 Camasan. So I'm actually using a 22 at the moment, but hopefully if we can, we'll try and catch them on a bigger size 20. So that's it for the waggler. Um, I'll also just quickly show you about the stick float, because hopefully we'll catch some fish on the stick, maybe later in the session. So I've actually gone for the same uh, main line and hook lengths. Um, I'm using this quite fine five number six Drennan stick, and I've shotted it with just number 10 shots. So I've probably got around about 10 or 11 number 10 shots, which I like to do when I'm always, whenever I'm fishing with a, a stick float, I like to incorporate as many shots as I can. So I can be very versatile with how I have the rig, if I have it spread out like this, or if I want to bulk it down. And actually, believe it or not, it reduces tangles if you use more shot. If I was just to use three or four number sixes, you'll find that not only is the presentation not as good, but you'll probably get more tangles. The great thing about this float is I can actually fish it close in, which is my main line on the stick. But if it's hard 
and I want a different presentation, I can fish that over the top of my waggle line and sometimes that can get you valuable bites on a very difficult day. And finally, um, a rig and a, and a tactic that I would just be lost without when I'm fishing is uh, setting up this Sigma wand. Um, obviously, I'm going to link Ledger with this Sigma wand. And if I want to just rest the peg or try a different presentation, it's great to have five or ten minutes on the link ledger. And as you can see, the way I've set this up is um, I've got a running swivel that's stopped by a number eight shot. And I've doubled up some, some real line through that and I've just got two AA shot on. So it's a very fine link ledger. I'll be able to get it out wherever I want it and hold it in position today because the river's not too strong. And I've got a, a nice long hook length. So this hook length's probably about three, four foot long. And I can vary that, but that can give me a really deadly form of presentation on a hard day. So apart from the, the main line that I'm feeding just past the middle, I'm also feeding a line closer in. And my hope is there that sometime during the five hours, I might be able to get some fish feeding there and maybe also some bonus fish like some perch. So I'm fishing that just about really just a rod length out. And uh, I'm just sporadically feeding that with four or five maggots. And um, like I said at the start, I'm looking to keep trying that to give my main line a rest, but also potentially boost my weight with, with some perch. The reason I've fed the middle of the river is that um, I think on a clear day like this, you know, the disturbance of me fishing and, and certainly Ian the cameraman, is going to push the fish away and probably over towards the far bank. So the area that I'm feeding, I'm trying to attract the fish back and pick them off carefully. Every so often I might actually fish right over and pick off a fish, but I don't want to feed there. I want to try and draw the fish away to an area where I can catch them effectively and they feel comfortable. I don't think I'd be able to put together a good weight of fish today by fishing close in. So the shotting pattern I'm fishing today on this relatively shallow peg is very simple. I've just got a couple of small number 12 style type shots down so that I can really fish nicely on the drop and uh, I can maximise the drop of that bait because I think that a lot of the fish today are actually feeding up in the water. But it's not deep anyway, so I don't need much lead to get the bait down. And I think also in the summer like this, the fish are very active and they will be feeding up in the water. Um, to compound that even more, I'm actually using some floating maggots, which is a trick I use for nearly all my match fishing. And I believe that that will help to, to slow the bait even further. If I was um, getting a lot more fish and I wanted to fish in a more positive way, I might pull some more dropper shot down to give me a more positive rig and one that I can read the bites more effectively. But at the moment, I'm having to fish with as much finesse as possible and I'm actually fishing with one tiny drop or, or maybe two, that's all. I think that kind of rig on a shallow peg like this is, is going to be pretty much the norm anyway. But roach are surprisingly fickle. And, and on hard days like this, I think everything you can do to improve the presentation will result in more fish and obviously a better match weight at the end of the day. Um, and a few tips I like to do that is obviously I like to use a bait open like this. And um, I've developed a style of being able to load the catapult and feed one handed. So I can save time when I cast. So I can cast out and then I can feed with one hand so I've still got hold of the rod if I get a bite and um, I'm, I'm fishing and concentrating on my float all the time. I think getting in that kind of a rhythm of being able to feed like that is a really key advantage. What I've learned since I've fished with the Shakespeare team and fished with some fantastic river anglers is um, it's all about really weighing up the peg at the start of the match. And I think the best way to describe that is by probably by, certainly if you don't know the venue, by being very defensive. So by just feeling your way in to start with, um, you know, not going mad with the bait, particularly if it's a team match, and just trying to build the swim up and get an understanding of the fish that are present and feeding on the day. So by doing that, it gives me the option of upping the feed if the fish respond well, or 
conversely, cutting back to make sure that I can maximise and get the most out of the swim. So I'm now uh, resting the waggler line and I'm just trying the stick float closer in. I've had a few goes on it already and picked up a few small perch and the odd roach. But I'm hoping that as the match progresses, I should be able to catch a, a few bonus perch on this line. If not, at least I'm achieving resting the main line and still adding a few fish to the net by putting a few perch and roach in the, in the net. The way I'm fishing it is I'm fishing it slightly down the peg. So I'm not feeding in front of me. I'm loose feeding three or four maggots about five or six meters downstream. And I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. One, because I want to keep that away from my main area that I'm bringing fishing and playing fish so I don't disturb it. And two, because there's a bit of a downstream wind, I'm using a light stick float and I want to get behind the float so I can get much better presentation rather than fishing it straight out in front of me. As you can see, the river's hardly moving, but um, I feel this could be a good line and certainly a line that could help to boost my catch at the end of the day. So even though I'm fishing a different line, uh, I'm still maintaining the same feed rate on the waggler. So I'm just firing a few maggots and keeping the hemp going in to try and build up the confidence of the fish back and also bring them back into the swim. Well, there we go. It's just a small um, perch, rather, but it just shows what I mean. At least I'm constantly putting fish in the net and gradually building up the, the weight. So this line can be a very positive line as well, and one that you could turn into maybe a big fish line, you know, looking for a, a bigger chub or even a barbel. So even though it's not going that way at the moment, it gives me an option to develop this line further during the match. So after that small flurry of fish on the stick, um, I'm going to leave that line alone, continue to feed it, and I'm just going to try the link now just to see what that could produce. And I'm going to fish that out on the main river. There we go. Not a massive roach, but it's a nice one nevertheless. Missed a few bites on the link, but it just shows that it can be a viable method and one that on its day can be actually the only way to catch. Well, it's the end of the five hour session now and with this final roach, I'm going to call it a day. I've had between eight and 10 pound of fish today, which has been great fun. As we feared with the conditions, been so bright and also the fact that the venue was fished yesterday I don't think we've seen its full potential. The main method today has been the waggler but as we explained we've caught fish on the straight lead and the stick float to keep things ticking over. Um, the main species was roach but we've also caught a few small chub, some beautiful grayling and even a trout plus the perch. So it just shows you what a varied match I would have had today in terms of the species caught and also the methods employed. I just want to thank Martin High from Murfield Club for showing us the venue and letting us fish today and I really can't wait to get back and fish a match here, hopefully on a peg as good as this. Thanks for watching.